Hi, welcome to Alaska Frontier Gunsmith and Taxidermy. Today we are bringing you this video because we've gotten a lot of requests from some of our locals here. We are a small family owned uh, taxidermy and gunsmith uh, business and we got this request to do this video on our hide stretching table. It's fairly easy. Uh, so I'm going to turn this over to my husband right now, which he is a professional gunsmith and taxidermist also. And so here's my husband, Mark. Hello, my name is Mark. And as my wife had said, uh, we are a family owned small business. Um, about 50% of the stuff we do, we do right out of our house. Uh, the other 50% we do out of our shop. It's currently cold outside in Alaska, so we're doing most of our stuff out of the house right now. So bear with us. Uh, what we do is we have to consolidate our space because we have a small cabin we work out of. So just bear with us on that. So today I'm going to tell you how to make a hide stretching table. This is used to stretch any number of hides, whether it is a caribou hide for a rug, a bear hide for a rug, a wolf, a coyote, it doesn't matter. You can stretch any pelt to make a rug with. Um, this is a commonly used table by taxidermists. That's nothing special, it's nothing you know complicated, but it's really useful and I'll show you how to make one and then in another video we'll actually show you how to use it. So come along with me and we'll start uh, basically giving you the details of how to make it. So we will include a set of plans in the video that you can pause and look at and follow. Okay, so let's start with the basics to build your hide stretching table. You need two 4 by 8 sheets of plywood. I prefer 5 8 thickness. That gives me rigidity. The next you'll need is two fold up uh, tables. The plastic tables that you can get for parties and such. Uh, you can get them at Costco's. You can get them at Sam's. You'll need two of those. Next you will need eight carriage bolts three inches long. You'll need uh, two washers and one lock washer and one wing nut for every carriage bolt you have. So hopefully that makes some sense to you. Now once you get that, the first thing you need to do is you need to lay these two boards together on your two tables. And it doesn't matter where they sit on the tables as long as they are together. Now at this point, you're going to start marking your grid okay so what I do is I simply come over to where these two boards meet and I don't know if you can see this or not um, but there is a line right here this is where these two boards meet um, so it's four foot this way and then four foot back this way so right here at this point here and I'll darken this up because this is our actual table we use I put a dot on this tape on this table and I put a zero around this this is our zero point for this line. Now I'll go to the other side of the table and I'll do the same thing. So, so I've came over here to the other side of the table and there again you'll see the line right here between the two boards. Put a dot here and then I put my zero mark okay and I'll explain why later so now that we have this point here what you do is you run the boards back and forth over these two tables that are underneath and find the halfway point where there is an overhang evenly on both tables and a little bit of a gap in between the two tables to where it feels solid once you have that you need to hold down with your hands grab a drill and you'll drill straight down through the board, through the plastic table underneath, and then you'll drop a carriage bolt in. 
and you'll do the same thing for the board right next to it. So you'll drill down through here, you'll drop one of those three inch carriage bolts in, you'll put two washers and a lock nut, or excuse me, lock washer, and then a wing nut on the bottom of this. And the reason we use wing nuts is, is because we take this table apart when we're not using it. Like I said, we do some of our work in our cabin. You may be doing it in a shop or an extra room in your house if you want to. So this makes it foldable and portable. Now, once we do that, we go to the other side and we do the same process. We put two bolts down and secure them. Now this keeps the table from moving at this point. Once that's done, there's actually two more bolts at the other edge of the table on the other side. You can't see it because of this height that's sitting here, but there's literally two bolts that sit right here. And so these have been drilled down the same way as these two have and secured. And then on the other side, the same way. So there, like I said, there's a total of four bolts on each table that hold this table down. There's no other bolts on the outside of this. These are the only ones that are here. That's all you need. Okay, so once you have those eight carriage bolts uh, drilled through and locked in, now you're locked in solid on the table here. So now you've got stability. It's not going to move on you. You know that uh, the zero line on the other side that we showed you, that's going to be your starting point for your one access. Now that you've done that, you're going to run a tape measure. from this edge over here and you're going to come down 48 inches. Now that 48 inch mark is going to be right on this edge. Once you get this, you draw a dot just like this. And you put your dot there so you know that that's halfway along that table. And then you go ahead and put your zero point here. Now, once this is done, we'll go to the other end of the table and we will do that. Okay, so picture this not being cut out yet and I'll discuss that later. But your board will be here and it will be one piece. You'll do the same thing. You will come along and you will follow your uh, straight edge down here and you will come to 48 inches. And you will put yourself a dot on this and a circle. Now, what this is doing is this has now made a, a zero point in your table. And what I mean by that is, is you know that this is exactly one half of your table. So if you have five inches this way of a hide, you should have five inches this way of the hide. This is how you center your hide up. More of that later. At this point, we're just going to make tick marks on the board because we're going to eventually draw them in and make our grid pattern. So every two inches, as you see on this tape measure here, you're going to make them right in here or right along the edge. So you'll go two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, and you'll keep going all the way across here. You'll come past your first board and you'll just keep going. No numbers yet, just mark your tick marks. You want to come along here and you want to do this. So now you have all of your marks drawn in on this side. You want to come in about two and a half feet or so, and you want to do the same thing. You just want to draw those same two inch tick marks all the way down. And you'll repeat this process about every two to two and a half feet all the way across the table. Now once that's done, we're going to reverse the process and we're going to start and draw the lines going this way every two inches. And then once that's done, move over, draw the lines, the tick marks every two inches. And you're going to repeat this process just like this every two inches, about every two to two and a half feet, all the way across. 
And the reason I say about every two or two and a half feet is we use a yardstick for a nice straight edge to draw on. So once we have our tick marks, and they will be ticked this way as well as this way now. So you will lay out your board using your ruler and you'll take a tick mark. And for demonstration purposes, we'll say that there is a tick mark right here, a tick mark here, and a tick mark here. And so what you would do is you would line your straight edge. In this case, like I said, we use a yardstick. And you would line that up on this line right here. And then you would just simply draw your line accordingly right down that edge. Now, try to make it as straight as possible. If it's a smidge off one way or the other, don't panic. This is for reference. It's not for millimeter accuracy, okay? And you'll continue to draw these lines based on your tick marks. And because you've done this every two inches, you'll start to see lines every two inches. From there, once you've gone all the way across the table, you'll turn around and you will start the exact opposite way. You will work your way back across the table following those tick marks, just like this. So we'll say that there's a tick mark here and a tick mark here and so you would just draw your line across here. Now I recommend using Sharpies. Use whatever you want. I recommend Sharpies because they have a nice sharp point to them and they work well. Once you have your grid pattern in place, these little grids will be two inch by two inch square. Now comes the difficult part you have to label your table. So if you remember, we started out by putting zero points on our table. So we know that where these two boards meet and we put that dot in the zero, that's a zero point. And we have one on the opposite end of the table that we showed you. We have one at the base of the table that we showed you. And over in the front that's actually cut out now that we showed you. So what you do is you, you have to climb up onto the table at this point, but you will climb up to the center of this table following one of the zero points. I don't care which one it is, but you have to follow a zero point all the way through. Taking your straight edge that you have, you will find your other uh, zero point. So in this case, our zero point would be right here. Well, we know that that line is our zero point and our grid. So we just follow the grid line that we would have had in place and we line that up. So now we've, we're following one zero point and we come up here and we follow another zero point. Okay, so we've taken our straight edge and we've followed the zero point from one side or the other. It doesn't matter which way we follow that zero point in. And then we take our other tape just because it's easier to follow and hook the zero point and drag it to us. So we know that this edge right here is our zero point and this edge coming in here like this would be our zero point. Now keep in mind this hide obviously wouldn't be on here and this would be all plywood. So at this point we would take our marker and we would put a dot right here. That is our zero point and then draw a zero around this. That is our starting point. At that point, you can move all this out of the way. And for purposes of demonstration, I'll use this pin as our zero point. So the tip of the pin would be right where the zero point is. So this would be the zero point if the hide wasn't here. So what you would do at this point 
is you count outward from zero. So from here, you go to the first mark. Okay? That's your two. But we're not going to write two here. Okay? We're going to write two here. You're going diagonal this way. Okay? And there's a reason for this. When you lay a hide down here, it's really hard to see. Okay? When you put something on it, you can't see the numbers. And a lot of times, the curvature of the hide cuts in and you can see a number a lot easier and you can follow it. So anyways, if this is zero, you go up one, over one, two. And then you'll do the same thing. You'll go up one mark, over one, and two. And you'll do the same thing on the bottom side. Over one, down one, two. And the same thing here. Over one, down one, two. And all you're doing is you're labeling this. So every time you move, you will follow the same pattern. So from this number here, which was the two that we left off on, you'll do the same thing. Up one, over one. These are marks now. So up one mark, over one mark. That's your four. And you'll continue this pattern. And what you will see is this pattern will move this way as exampled right here. So now we've came out to 18 and we keep marking. We'll go up one, over one. We'll write 20 right there and up one and over one. That's 22. Up one, over one, 24. And continue that all the way out to that corner. And you will continue this pattern out. So what I recommend doing is, is follow that pattern I showed you and do the center. Do far enough out that you can climb off the table and reach back in and write the numbers. Because it's a real pain in the butt if you have to keep climbing on and off this table. Trust me. So once you've started from here and you've got your pattern going this way and this way and this way, and this way and you've gotten it out far enough that you can reach in go ahead and climb off the table okay so as I said we work our pattern you know depending on which direction you're going um, you'll go over one down one over one down one or if you're on the other side it'll be over one up one doesn't matter as far as which way it is, as long as you are progressing along a 45 degree angle from center. So we've made all these numbers through here, as you can see. And then we get to the very edge. Now the corner of this is going to be 48, obviously. You're not going to see that. This will be a corner, a square corner right here, which eventually you will take your little jigsaw and saw off if you're smart because let me tell you if you don't and you walk around here and you catch this with your nether region it hurts saw it off make it user friendly okay so once you've done these diagonals like this you have an idea of where each line is so you know that this is the 44 line that 44 line runs this way the 42 line runs this way, the 40 line, etc. Okay, so all the lines here coincide with each other. This line here, even though it's the 40 line, also runs to this line here, which is the 40 line. So every time you come to one of these diagonals, this 45 degree point, that you know that this is the 38 line, and this is the 38 line. And as you get further out, because you're, like I said, you will start in this corner, you'll have 46. 46 you don't have to label because 48 on the outside edge, you know this. When you do 44, then you write 44 on this edge here and 44 here. You'll come to 42. If you need to give yourself a sight to make sure you're on the right line like this, do it and then write the number. And then do the same thing like this and write the number to make sure you're on the right line. 
Same thing, you'll move to 40. You'll come down here, you know you're on the right line, you write 40. You line it up this way, you know you're on the right line, write 40. And you will continue to do this same pattern as you progress out, like this. If you want to cheat and run each line like this and write them down, as you go, you can. Just remember that when you start numbering this line, you have to use the same number of the line that you've numbered here first. So you'll do it like this, 38, 36, 34, 32, 30. Start at one corner and work your way out. Do this all the way across here. This is your grid pattern. This grid pattern will help you determine how to stretch your hides and that will be in a different video. Now once this is done, we're going to move to the head. Okay, so I'm going to use this yardstick as the pointer here. We have a hide on here. This hide has been stretched and that's the reason why this cutout is here. Now our cutout that we use, this is the end of the board here, okay, and so our cutout is 22 inches deep. That's what we prefer. We do big rugs and we have big rug shells. And the purpose of this cutout is because your mannequin, which is on this right now, has to sit below the level of the table so you're able to stretch the hide. You don't stretch the hide without a mannequin on it if you're rugging. If you just want to stretch hides and that's it, you don't need to cut this out. But if you're going to rug, or think you're going to rug, you need to have this cutout made. We do 22 inches deep because we do big grizzly bears. And those mannequins are really big. So 22 inches deep and it is 16 inches wide. Now when I say that, I'm going to use this uh, layout ruler, or this yardstick, as an example. So I've put this yardstick on the 18 inch mark over here, and the 18 inch mark over here, just so you can see how the numbers would progress through here. Okay, so normally this, the 18 inch mark here, would be your zero point. Okay. And this would be 2, and this would be 4, this would be 6, this would be 8. So when I say this is 16 inches apart, it's 8 inches from the zero point on either side. Gone down here to the 22 point, or the 22 inch mark here. And then at the very end, we just basically curve this. So what you would do is you would take and mark it here, and mark it here. And you know we're out here 22, so you put a, a mark on the zero mark here. And then you would simply just take your hand and just do a little bit of a rounding off to bring it over here to this line here, just like that. And then you would do the same thing over here. Once that's done, you take your jigsaw, and you run it in here, and you follow that line. You come to your curve, you curve it around. You hit your 22 inch mark here, and you continue to curve till you hit your eight inch mark, or your eight inch line over here, and then follow that line back out. And that's what you get, is you have a nice curve that runs in through here. Leaving the curve part to the very end, obviously. Now, there again, when you're done with cutting this out, I highly recommend you take your jigsaw and you round the corners off on both sides. Any corner you have here, there, the far one over there, any one you have, I highly recommend you round off because the first time you catch it in the lower region, it will hurt and you will do it. I've done it. That's why I round mine off now. That completes the table. So, to give you a real quick reason why this is done the way it is, 
when you stretch your hide, the mannequin is in the is in the uh, hide, whether it's a bear or a fox or whatever, and you screw a board onto it, and then you line it up so the snout is centered on what would have been the zero mark through here. And like I said, we just do that by laying our little ruler out here, and so we know where the zero mark is, and we center our snout up with that. And then from there, we stretch the end of the hide out along that zero mark, and staple it. That keeps the hide centered. From that point this grid is used to just simply even your hide out. So after you've centered the hide from nose to tail, then you would pull the hide or stretch the hide accordingly. That's what this table is used for you pull evenly. So this paw here would be pulled to a certain point on the table and then you would match it with the other paw over here. You would stretch it to that same opposing point on the opposite side of the table. And then you'd go to the back paws and you would do the same thing. This allows you to stretch the hide evenly. And from there you start on your trim work. But there again that's another video. This completes how to make a hide stretching table. If you have any questions on how this is done, please comment, let me know. I'll answer all the questions I can. Like I said, there's a set of plans including, included in this video at the very end. So go ahead and watch that so you can see the plans. Give us that thumbs up, subscribe to Alaska Frontier, gunsmith and taxidermy, and tell us what you'd like. Thanks.